Someone was asking about <clears throat> gravitational electromagnetic magnetic forces, but you already spoke about Yeah, that. we spoke on that. That people have to think about and live your life based on energy. Islam comes to perfect this reality, but too many times Muslims are only thinking salah. Why you don't talk about salah? All of it is, is in there. All these realities are in, in that reality of salah, but to think of it outside of the box so that we can achieve what Allah wants us to achieve. The salah is a form of energy on how to purify your energy, how to push out any type of negativity by grounding. So all of these are deep, deep realities but are necessary for the last days on how to open the heart and how to perfect the heart, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can you please enlighten us with knowledge of power of zero and free energy with regards to spirituality? Zero and free energy or zero point energy that we've talked before that people want from dunya, they want to put now, they put a certain amount of energy to get energy out. So they make engines that explode, you spend a lot of money and for these gas and pistons to move to get a certain amount of energy to come out. But heavenly energy is that you put a little bit of energy in and should be perpetual and moving. And, and that has to do with all that we talked about in the meditations. And son's zero point is to die before he dies. So the zero point horizon for insan for human beings so that to reach an energy point in which they don't have to put so much effort in to get the energy out. So at the beginning stages you have to put a lot of energy in, you have to struggle, you have to fight, you have to come against all the bad character, all the bad desires. So it is a tremendous struggle tremendous amount of energy has to be put into it. But at a point in which the entire body system and every cell of the body has to make a tawbah, that there's a point in which in this phase of cleansing that they reach a sincerity in which every cell of their being is begging Allah's forgiveness, an immense crying, immense sort of event for them of continuously asking Allah for forgiveness. Forgiveness for anyone who examines themselves long enough and vigilantly sees all the hypocrisy, sees all the bad characteristics. Can you imagine being raised in the presence of Allah with hypocrisy? What, what you can answer at that time? So they begin to see their badness, see their bad character and cry and cry and cry until Allah releases an energy within them in which every cell of their being is shaking and crying and asking for istighfar. And that happens in death. When every bit of them is in pain and they're just breathing their last seven breath to leave the body. You don't think it's immensely scared about now where it's going to be entering, did it achieve what it had to achieve or or did all sorts of nefarious things thinking nobody knew but now is going to the one who really knows everything. So there's imme immense amount of istighfar and forgiveness and, and repentance. If they can do that in the physical world where they fight against themselves and continuously repent, continuously repent, look at their badness, their bad characters and what they've done then they're reaching towards death. Why? Because they truly feel that they're dying. That, ah Rabbi I don't know, I don't feel, I just, I just not content with my inner being. And the state of death and before death, mawt qabl al mawt is their zero point <coughs> which they didn't have to reach that in death because zero point at death you exert no more energy and now your soul which is the eternal energy source is now moving at the rate of eternity. To achieve that in dunya is to achieve 
Maut Qabl al Maut in which they repented, repented and then didn't fight anyone, they fought themselves, cried about themselves, cried about their hypocrisy and that every cell of them in sujood was, would scream out in forgiveness, asking Allah's forgiveness until every cell felt the energy of that tawbah and they, they have immense energy experiences. So means then they reach their zero point in which Allah grant them their istighfar and now they radiate energy without putting any effort into it. They don't have to keep struggling to spark up their energy, they are lit and they're continuously flowing energy beings. They are at zero point, they put no effort in and Allah make them just radiating energy. If they exert themselves they bring out immense amounts of energy and that, that energy is of an eternal well, it has no shortage, it doesn't run out. It's funny because the, the movie ones in the sci-fi movies these people that love to see these like sci-fi things a person's moving around, if you see them they're going like this and they're moving around and they're pulling out the electromagnetic forces of dunya. And they get it, they use it and they become very tired because it's like it was like a limited gas station that only had like five gallons for them to take. Allah's energy has no limitation. That when Allah light the person the immensity of, of all of heavens can move through that servant and that's why they say one can flip the whole dunya upside down and not get tired from it. So that's when Allah and the Divinely Kingdom come behind and into that servant, that's why we say, Qalb al-Mu'min Baytullah. When Allah is describing His house then that has uh, immense, immense understanding. So that they exert nothing and immense amounts of power can be exhibited through their personalities. All that they're limited by is the sensitivity of their physicality. I think we talked last week too that they had to immerse themselves in water just so that their physical body wouldn't burn from the energy that was coming through them and they could steam and make rivers to boil. Imagine in the last days when Allah says that the oceans will be on fire, what type of power He's going to be bringing? Mountains will crumble, who's going to make them crumble? And who's going to make these oceans to be boiling? It's all the servants, inshaAllah. Best sci-fi but it's real fi. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Is faith and energy stored in the plasma of the blood and if we donate plasma could we be open to attack? No, no inshaAllah nothing in the blood, just your DNA and, and coding on yourself. This energy again is, is, is not stored on us, this energy is flowing through the heart and the soul. The soul is not something that can be put in a bottle and, and to be preserved. Anything from the badan and from the body is from the earth, the earth, the earth ashes to ashes is not, not of that reality. But the danger of the blood transfusion is that your DNA, right? so people will have the DNA that may attach yourself to that DNA and the accepting of other people's blood has their bad energy. So that be a difficulty, best to have relatives to donate in the event of an emergency the person needs blood they get it from their relatives. Not, not from just random people because the energy of the person, the desires, the wants, all of that energy reality of a negative energy, dunya energy is in their blood and in their desires and the shaitans that are running through the blood. But as far as the soul reality, no the soul is not attached to the blood. Sayyidi, is the blood donation similar to hijama? That the taking of blood, to donate blood. That, that, yeah it, it has a similarity but it's not taking from the points where the hijamas are taking from. 
So they take blood direct from the, the vein of your arm. The hijama are on the points on the body in which the, bo the body is gathering old blood. The most important are the shoulders and the, the back of the spine for most basic. They have other points on the head and skull but the most important are the shoulders because all of the bad iron of the body is being stored into the shoulders and that's where shayateen or, or the frit they land in the back of the shoulders of human beings and they send their beak from the back into the heart. Because they can land there because there's dirty iron there. So the system of the body that iron has to be cleaned and these are points across the shoulders. Uh, as salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa How can we build iron even with a proper diet and iron pills and strengthen your energy? Yeah, the, the iron treatment that, that is very common, anemia and the lack of iron and as a result they have a lack of oxygenization, oxygen, the, the, the temperatures in their body are off. So there are many difficulties with lack of iron. So they have to seek their medical advice on how to get an iron drip with the iron IV if it's very low. They take their iron vitamins, eat the food that are high in iron. There's also superfoods, moringa, moringa powders and all of these that are super superfoods and have high levels of iron and not the high levels of sugar. They're the dates that Prophet recommended that are higher in iron but if you have high sugar that could, that could be a, a bit of a difficulty. So there's ways in which to try to bring the level of iron up and those are medical but most important is from whatever iron you do have try to purify it. And that becomes with the food and making your du'a over what you drink, what you eat, meditating, breathing, breathing practices and connecting. That breath when it comes in with energy has a tremendous potential upon the breath because the reality of your blood is first started by your breath. How you breathe, the blood is, is through the bronchial tree. What energy you put onto that breath, then those blood cells become dressed by that and move towards the heart. So then the power of the breath can cleanse and bring tremendous energy on the, on the iron of the body and the blood of the body and then it goes into the heart. Imagine if the heart then is doing zikrullah, it becomes stamped with the dhikr of Allah And then imagine how difficult it is for shaitan to move within the heart of somebody making dhikr. And that's why you understand why shaitan tells people, don't make dhikr. And that's why Allah says in Holy Qur'an that the one whom shaitan made him to forget dhikrullah, he's forgotten Allah So Allah deems that to be a, a grave difficulty that when shaitan makes you to forget the remembrance of Allah why? Because he's being burned in your blood and in your heart when your heart is making dhikr all the time, Allah, Allah, Allah. When the blood is flowing through the heart and being stamped on the iron, the dhikr of Allah. If shaitan is in there, is the one being stamped by that, he's being burned. And that's why then the, the conflict and difficulty within the heart and, and heart difficulties. So it has a tremendous reality, the dhikr of Allah all dhikr and salawat, everything, all that we're doing, inshaAllah. As salaamu ya Shaykh Nurjan. Walaykum as salaam Earlier you said using spirituality inappropriately. Can you please give an example? Not that we are anywhere capable of this. Well it can be anything, anybody feeling they have uh, any type of spiritual energy and trying to push their energy into the inappropriate place or inappropriate location, anybody who thinks that they knew a little bit and try to give dialogue and guidance. Anything that we're trying to do has to have a, a sense of awe and respect that this is a, a gift from Allah and this is from the, the office and the, the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad 
So imagine that if you have a job at the White House and you go in and you steal their stationery, you take their pens and from their phone you make phone calls to people, hi I'm calling from the White House, give me a pizza. You start to abuse your authority and your ability. You take the stationery and start writing letters to collect on this or to do this and you use it for yourself and for your own interest that has a tremendous retribution. And from our lives we've seen people in immense difficulty for misappropriating that office and that authority. That's the danger, you know, that you have to hold yourself to a higher standard and that everything is only for Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad So restrain myself and don't talk, don't give guidance, don't, don't do anything because people will say, oh you're with that shaykh and then look what you're saying and then you're responsible for these things. But you know, it's very dangerous, that's all we can say because we've seen people in immense difficulty. They're not in that difficulty because they wanted that and they're going to carry that and that's what they desire to have. They're in that difficulty because they did things wrong against Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, When crying in meditation or while missing our Prophet the body starts with vibration. What is the reality of vibration? Yeah, go into sujood if nobody is around. Yeah, these things yeah, if you feel and people are around, stop so that not to be known by people or, or to exhibit yourself as something different. But if you're at home and you're repenting and crying and going to sujood because you're closest to Allah in sujood and that repent and cry and, and ask that every cell of my body that to be repenting and then Allah begin to send an immense energy upon the person. And that every cell of that body as if you're screaming for forgiveness from every cell of the body. So it's immense energy flows that are flowing through the body and, and, and uh, reaching towards a state of death. The loss of desire, loss of wanting this, loss of… but doesn't mean that now you email, I don't want to live and that you say certain things and, and that means you achieve that station. No, these are servants of Allah that they live for the responsibility that Allah is giving to them. They don't ever talk childish talk like that, I don't want to live, I don't like it and think of that I reached that station. That's not anything to do with that. That they cry unto their Lord for forgiveness and they understood their life is a responsibility and Allah is asking for them to be of service. So life is very sacred and that they have a responsibility to Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad and that this is a, a private time in which Allah they're begging Allah's forgiveness and so that these energies enter into their being and that they lose their taste for everything and that is a state of death before death and the zero point within their being. At that time Allah can flip their reality in which they operate now from their soul and they hear with Allah's hearing because the soul is hearing now. They see with Allah seeing, when they connect, they see what Allah wants them to see. But right now everybody is using their body and the soul is inside. When they reach their point of tawbah and forgiveness Allah will flip it and bring the soul's power on the outside. And then all those realities and all those dress. And they live a life like they're in seclusion, they don't go anywhere, they do their practices and they go here and they go there and they go here and there, very limited. And every day they would come home and after Asr they would make their seclusion and isolate and connect and, and make their connection. So it means they continuous struggle against oneself. You can't be ordered into seclusion when you're not practicing in that reality. So that reality is living a life continuously secluding oneself from people because they know that the, the characters that come out, they're not happy with the characters and the dialogue that comes out. So living a life of continuously cleansing and cleaning and they work, they work hard. We talked last week about parents complaining that 
my kids follow you, now they say he doesn't have to go anywhere, he's just gonna sit in his couch and do zikr. I said, no, 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 you have to go work and that's the whole struggle. You go to your job, you go do your work and then you come home and clean yourself and repent that if you said bad things and did bad things. But you, you function very high level function, go out and be successful and, and give to the tariqah. Otherwise if the tariqah was you know 500 people sitting on their couch, uh, well, who's going to eat and how, how are we going to do anything? So no it's high functioning people and people who are extremely successful and they are successful against taming their bad character. So alhamdulillah everything is in balance. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum On last week's talk on the oceans of power, when the power of zikr is coming and the body heats up, does the energy keep on getting accumulated or does it need to be dispersed? When well, you're grounding, so we have one, one when we're meditating and, and grounding, I said if the energy comes very strong going to sujood and as a process of sujood you feel like lightning coming out of your head into the ground and into your heart, so it, it'll be grounded onto the earth, inshaAllah. Good. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Il shaykh al-Nabi sallallahu InshaAllah. Let's do the bayat inshaAllah to Nashpandiyatul Aliyya inshaAllah. Namit al Ya InshaAllah bayat to Sultan al Awliya, Ma Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daqistani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Ma Shaykh Muhammad Adam, and the blessings and barakah of Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Fa'auzu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Radeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna alladheena yubayyunaka inna ma yubayyun Allah, yaad Allah yufawka aydihim. Faman naqawdu fa inna ma yaghuta ala nasi, wa man awfa bima ahad, ulayhi Allah fa sayyatun ajrun azeem, radeetun billahi rabban wa islami deenan. Wa bi Sayyidina Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa nabiyyan wa rasoolu wa Qur'ani kitabun wa Allahumma naqulu wa keel wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa qabilna bi Sayyidina Sultanil awliya ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani wa Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil wa barakatuh Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani Shaykh Adnan Kabani wa Allahumma naqulu wa keel Allahu 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 Haq Allahu, 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 Haq, Allahu, 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 Haq, Haqqu Ya Rabbi, Illa Sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Uruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sayyid Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umma, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatina Fatima Tazar alayhi salam, Fi barakat al-Ursa Mubarak Sayyidina Sultan al-Awliya man sharaf al-Deen Daqistan, Qaddis Allah, Sayyidina wa Sayyidina wa Sadatina wa Siddiqina al-Fatiha.